Hi, I'm Mark Brace, Head of Analysis at Osprey Flight Solutions, bringing you this week's update. This week, the Osprey system has registered over 3,300 incidents, and the analysis team has published 39 alerts since last Thursday, of which eight were critical. The main news remains the Ukraine-Russia situation, with uh, Russia claiming it's pulled back troops, um, but Ukraine in the West saying they continue to be deployed to the border, and no further high-level diplomatic engagement scheduled. De-escalation still seems a distant prospect. A significant cyber attack this week targeted Ukraine's Ministry of Defence, armed forces and state banks, um, all but blamed on Russia, which has denied it. But this maybe gave an indication of more to come in that sphere of warfare. Ukraine is keeping its airspace open, uh, while some regulatory bodies have issued notices in the past week regarding the potential risk in the country's airspace away from eastern Ukraine, where advice has been in place in the longer term. Uh, at least two Ukrainian operators have had to fly aircraft out of Ukraine to sit out the crisis at the behest of insurers and lessers, and some international operators have suspended use of Ukrainian airspace, whereas some have laid on extra flights. Overall, Osprey continues to assess that a full or partial invasion of Ukraine by Russia remains likely this quarter. In the past week, we've increased our risk levels to high for Ukrainian airspace outside Donetsk and Luhansk, Russian airspace along the Ukrainian border, and Belarus airspace, and all airports in Ukraine are also now at high. In the past two weeks, our team has issued seven alerts on Russia-Ukraine, and our analysis has also shown that 65% of international operators currently conducting flights in Ukraine have access to Osprey's alerts, and over 50% have made operational changes in some form, schedule adjustments, rerouting, suspending services, or avoiding the airspace entirely in the past two weeks. Given the constantly changing situation, uh, in addition to our alerts and situation updates, tomorrow, the 18th of February at 1300 UTC, we're hosting a free webinar providing an update on the situation, covering political, operational and military angles and their impact on aviation. The link's in the post above. Elsewhere, on the crime and security front, this week we highlighted some concerning allegations of customs officers in Indonesia at Jakarta's main airport extorting the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of dollars from a shipping company. And we've issued a number of alerts on drugs trafficking via air as countries continue to release annual seizure figures for 2021, with several European nations featured this week. Figures are up across the board, reflecting the increase in air traffic despite continued COVID-related restrictions. On COVID-19 matters, a number of countries in the Asia-Pacific region continue to see record case numbers fuelled by the Omicron variant, such as Malaysia, South Korea and Hong Kong. The latter struggled with quarantine capacity as it tries to suppress outbreaks, and given the strict measures already in place, which uh, what was already a troublesome place for air carriers to operate to is unlikely to improve in the near term. And finally, uh, in the US, where we've covered the unruly passenger problem extensively over the past year, details emerged of an incident involving an intoxicated passenger at Orlando Airport in Florida. Having been pre prevented from boarding her flight, she rode away from the gate on a motorised suitcase pursued by a police officer on a bicycle. The incident, which unfortunately ended with charges of battery of a police officer and causing damage to a police car, took place in April, but details were only revealed in court records and video footage released this week. Thank you for watching. Please follow us on LinkedIn and join us again next week.